What's up, players? Do you know your basic bar chords? But struggle to play something more interesting? I'm going to show you three super easy tips that will immediately make your chord progression sound more interesting and unique. Okay, let's start with these three chords. Four minor, five minor, one minor, just like this. Now the first step is simply finding the chords on guitar, and there's always two main voicings for each guitar chord, the root on the A string and the root on the E string. So I can play my C minor on the third fret, or on the eighth fret. Now as I find all my options, I'll have a clear understanding of where I can go on my guitar. And if this takes some time to find all these chords, that just means it's even more important for you to do it so you can become more fluent with the fretboard. The benefit of this knowledge will be more clear as we continue with this lesson, but holy shit, I wish someone explained this to me like this when I was younger. So I got my chords, now how do I play them? Well, we have a handful of reasonable options. We could do whole notes like this, We could strum them. We could arpeggiate them. But what you often hear in Neil's soul is to finger pick them with a tap on the backbeat just like this. This pattern is great to practice to develop your feel since we are playing a bit of a drum beat along with the guitar part when we're tapping. So now we're starting to sound kind of cool, but now we might want to add some sauce or variation to these chords. The best starting point is to use a hammer on or pull off on the top two strings. For this progression, I have my D minor chord right here and I can hammer on pull off on the top two strings with my pinky here or here on the eighth fret, but I'm gonna do just it on the B string. Now one of the big tricks is to making this work is making sure your bar is down strong. So I need to hold my whole chord down and still have the independence of my pinky to hammer into that. Now you gotta take your time with this if you've never done this before because it's, it's a little tricky, but practice, 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 am I right? So I'm gonna do it just simple like that to start right here on the D minor chord. And then when I go up to the G minor chord, I'm gonna do a hammer on pull off on the high E string. And of course I could see my options right on the B and the E string, right here on the 13th fret. I could do either one of those, but right here I'm just gonna go like this. And just to give it a little bit more, I'm gonna grab that B string and do that move right there, all right? Yeah, beautiful. Of course you could approach this however you want, but the only trick is you gotta make sure you're in time. So any hammer on or pull off you add, just stay in time. That's our only simple first tip. Just add hammer ons or pull off to any of those two strings and it'll add just a little bit of something to your playing. So after you're playing a chord progression for a while, even with all your little moves you got now, it could still get a little boring. But right on the edge of monotony is a moment where it's possible for something exciting to happen. So after you've been playing this chord progression, the harmony is locked into the listener's ears, and you could add a simple chord extension to the harmony that will immediately make the chords pop. Extensions are any number above 7, 9, 11, or 13. Here I played a G minor 9 instead of G minor 7, and it immediately takes you into a different harmonic world. And yeah, I did something else too, a small substitution. I exchanged the D minor 7 for an F sharp diminished 7. Now, this is kind of like a more advanced form of adding an extension, like kind of, <laughs> but let's not get too deep into that right now. Just know that any diminished chord resolves up a half step. So this particular chord, F sharp diminished 7, always works great before a G minor. But that's the main idea, pop in an extension occasionally to add some excitement to an ongoing chord progression. Before we get to the last tip to make your chord progression sound hella dope, remember you could download the PDF tabs, backing tracks, and follow along this lesson with the interactive tab at patreon.com slash nasty soul. Okay, now the final killer tip to add some spice to your chord progression, play single notes up the scale. Now remember when I said find both chord voicings on the E and the A string? Well, with this G minor nine chord right here, that's the A string root. So I could bring it on down here, find my G on the E string root. And I have that G minor chord. 
But of course, whenever I'm doing a chord move, I don't really want to get that low string in there. So I can make it simple just like this, barring the top four strings, G minor 9. To start, I don't even need to know my scales all over the fretboard, just where these basic shapes are. So over the G minor chord, I just need to know these three notes work in this position. And if I want to explore more options, I'll visualize this minor scale pattern with the G minor chord. Or I could try and find the scale going up the E string. This is a bit trickier, and from a practical context, you likely won't be going out of position further than one note, just like this. And one extra Neil Soli thing I did with this voicing is a hammer-on slidey move, like this. Now this move is also very tricky, and just like I was saying before with hammer-ons and pull-offs on a bar chord, that bar's gotta be down strong. So I gotta make sure that this bar is down strong, and hold it down as I'm moving my pinky in and out with the hammer on and the slides. Now I know you often hear this like really fast, like a fast little move and, and sure, that's kind of where we want it to be at. But when you're starting out with this, always start slow and you want to hear every single note, the hammer on, the slide, the slide, the hammer off. Or is it the pull off? And make sure you hear all that bar too still hear all those notes from the bar, everything's strong. Okay, so next time you're jamming out a chord progression, try these three things to make it more exciting. Add hammer-ons or pull-offs to the chords, add extensions to the chords, minor nine and major nine always sound good, and add single notes up or down the scale. And actually, I wanna add one more thing to this. Let's give it a little turnaround. Cause if we're soloing or jamming to this, three chords can get boring no matter how saucy you make them. So let's vibe it like this. Our chord progression is two bars right now. So let's play it three times, and the fourth time we'll play a turnaround that looks like this. All right, not too bad, right? Well, hold up. Remember that thing I said about a diminished chord resolving up a half step? What if I put a diminished chord right before the C minor where the loop starts over, and then we'd have this? And that's how I want you to work these ideas. Always play with them and see where they work as you get familiar and develop your own style with these tips. Don't forget to download the practice materials for this lesson, PDF tabs in the backing track, and also definitely check out the brand new course, Intro to Modern Neil Soul Rhythm Guitar, now available for all Patreon members. If you haven't joined this amazing community yet, what are you waiting for? Have access to exclusive guitar courses that will take your guitar playing to the next level, and downloadable practice materials that accompany every YouTube lesson like backing tracks, PDF tabs, and interactive tabs. So drop that Netflix subscription and get your guitar nastier than ever. I hope you got some good ideas from this. I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, keep jamming and stay nasty.